It's day 100 of the Israel-Hamas war, but the focus is elsewhere because a much bigger war is brewing, a war between the U.S. and the Houthis. It all started last year. Yemen's Houthis began attacking commercial vessels. Some 26 ships have been targeted so far, most of them in the Red Sea, and this has hit businesses. Trade through this route is down by 40%, 4-0, 40% down. Most ships are avoiding the Red Sea. Instead, they're taking the long route around Africa. So what did the U.S. do? They cobbled up a coalition to fight the Houthis, and on Friday, this coalition hit back. Missiles and rockets pounded targets in Yemen. Take a look at this. Here's a quick rundown of the attacks. The United States did most of the damage. They fired Tomahawk cruise missiles on Yemen. Reports say around 100 of them. The United Kingdom also joined in. Their fighter jets dropped guided bombs on Houthi targets. And casualties? The Houthis say five of their men were killed, but this attack was not about taking out men. It was about taking out machinery. The U.S. says around 60 targets were hit in 16 locations, 60 targets in 16 locations, like the capital Sana'a, the port city Hodeida, and the northern Houthi stronghold of Sada. The Houthis counted 72 strikes in all. So what's the strategy here? U.S. President Joe Biden wanted to dismantle Houthi attack sites to limit their ability to target ships. And did he achieve that? Both Biden and his allies say, yes, they did. We will make sure that we respond to Houthis as they continue this outrageous behavior, along with our allies. Will this strike be successful last night, sir? Yes. We're very, I don't think there's any civilian casualties. That's another reason why it's a success. Well, we've carried out a series of strikes together with allies, which will, we believe, degrade and disrupt the capability, the types of things that we've targeted our launch sites for missiles and for drones. Initial indications are that those strikes have been successful. Now, there are two things to note here. One, Joe Biden says he could order more strikes. And two, he thinks the attack was a success. I'm afraid he spoke too soon. Take a look at how Yemen responded to the airstrikes. A sea of people hit the streets, they chanted anti-U.S. slogans, they burnt the U.S. flag, and they called for retaliation. And that's exactly what the Houthis are doing. Because 48 hours later, they were back at it. The Houthis launched a cruise missile at a U.S. warship, the USS Laboon. That's what they targeted. The missile was shot down by a fighter jet, but chances are the Houthis will try again, and there lies the risk. What if one of these missiles or drones hits an American ship? What if it kills a U.S. sailor? Then Joe Biden will be tempted to escalate. After all, it's an election year in the U.S. No one wants a president who cannot protect his soldiers. So this is a risky game. And there's a downside too. If Biden escalates the fighting, Houthi allies could join in. They could join the battle on Yemen's side. Who are these allies? The Hezbollah in Lebanon. Shia militias in Iraq or the Iranian armed forces, all of them support the Houthis. If they join the conflict, it could trigger a much bigger war, and the U.S. and its allies on one side, Iran and the Houthis on the other. That's what we'll have. And what would such a war look like? Maybe the Russia-Ukraine war times 10. So U.S. President Joe Biden faces a tough call. He prefer his preferred option is airstrike, shoot and scoot. Don't get too close to the action. That's what he wants to do. But that may not work against the Houthis because remember, these are battle-hardened fighters. They've braved relentless carpet bombing by Saudi forces for years. So a few cruise missiles will not spook the Houthis. Plus, there are legal questions. Biden and Sunak just bombed a country. They did so without taking their parliament's permission, without taking the United Nations' permission. So questions are being asked. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak will address the British MPs today. Joe Biden is being asked to explain himself by the U.S. Congress. The question is, what happens next then?
We can't rule out more strikes. So this could end up becoming a tit-for-tat saga. At the same time, we are seeing more diplomacy. Look at these four developments. Number one, the U.S. has sent a private message to Iran. Now, Iran, as you know, supports the Houthis. Washington is now using back channels. They're asking Iran to control the rebels. Development number two, India's foreign minister, S.J. Shankar, is in Iran. Multiple Indian ships have been attacked so far. Some 10 Indian warships are guarding the Indian Ocean. So clearly, New Delhi is worried about these developments. Minister Jay Shankar will be hoping to leverage India's ties to keep Indian ships safe. Development number three, the UAE has criticized the Houthi attacks. And why is that important? Because no Arab country has spoken against the Houthis so far, or had spoken. They only disagreed in silence, but now Abu Dhabi has broken that silence. Maybe more Arab nations will follow. And development number four, China is suddenly concerned. Their foreign minister Wang Yi visited Egypt on Sunday. Listen to what he said. The situation in the Red Sea has escalated sharply recently, and China is deeply concerned about this. The waters of the Red Sea are an important international trade channel for goods and energy. China calls for a halt to the harassment and attacks on civilian ships. It's a crucial moment in this conflict. Not the Gaza one, but the Red Sea one. The Houthis are primed for battle. Their people and their fighters are rallying behind them. On the other side are Joe Biden and Rishi Sunak, two embattled leaders with low popularity. Will they gamble more political capital on an escalation? Things are moving fast in the Red Sea. We should find out soon enough.